So the worst one is you see people do this for extension cords and they just kind of spin this around their arm. The problem is that it's twisting the strands inside the rope every time you go around. And when you do this, you end up with a knot oftentimes, or you end up with this spiral rope where it just, it just does this, you know, as you lay it out. Uh, every rope has a lay to it, which brings me to the next method. The next method goes in this same circular pattern, but we're not wrapping around and we can kind of find the lay of a rope. So the kern or core of the rope often has a twist to it. It depends what kind of rope you have. So they want to spin or twist or lay a certain way. So if going this way is giving you these funky twists down here, you may have to switch over and go the other way. Okay, so you can see this one, it's when I do that, it's starting to have these little twists. So I know I need to go the other way here, the original way I was going. And when I'm doing this, I'm coming down and I'm giving a slight little twist with my thumb and index finger. And I do a slight little twist to spin it into place into this coil. So this is slightly better because you're actually kind of going with what the rope is naturally trying to do, but it still leaves you with this coil that is much more likely to get tangled and is twisting the rope a little bit either way. The third one is what I learned as the waterfall coil. And for this, you're essentially doing a loop on each side of your hand. So on the left, on the right, on the left, on the right, just like this. And so by doing this, you don't have to worry about the twist and you end up with this nice coil. You can do this close to the ground and you can kind of scrape this rope along the rock and, and not even scraping it. It's just kind of, it just kind of bumps into it and it slows down this swing, right? Sometimes you get this swing and you get these, just like this, it kind of went behind um, some of these coils. And so if this, if you drag it down here just a little bit, bump it on the ground, it takes that momentum out and just lays it right in front here. So another thing to note with this is it can be done singularly, like just one strand, or you can find the middle, which on this rope is quite easy to do. And then you can do two strands at the same time. This does give you a nice coil, but the downside, as you can see, is your hand is kind of the limitation with being able to hold all the coils. All right, so there we go. My hand is quite full, as you can see. Uh, not ideal, kind of tiresome. The next method will cover taking care of that issue as well. Now, from here on this coil and the next one, there's multiple ways to finish this, which I'll show you at the end. All right, now for my favorite is the butterfly coil. And this one looks very difficult, but uh, once you do it a time or two, it's actually much easier than it appears. So essentially you're going to just stretch out your arms, the rope in between, and throw that over your neck, okay? So your hands are kind of down here, even. You're going to take and hold uh, from that one side where the rope is standing. You're going to pull out again so that you've got this nice wide arm full of rope. Pinch on both, flip it over your neck, and you can come back here. I usually leave the loop in my hand here, stretch out, go over, and, and when you come down, you're really making sure that those loops are even. Come out, down, out, down, out, down. It's just like a butterfly flapping its wings, right? Now, if your hand gets full here, you can just drop that coil and start again. As long as you bring your arms down, it's still gonna be the same length. So check out how fast this can be from the start. So once you finish your coil and you have about 
an arm length or five or six feet left over at the end, you can finish this off a few different ways. My favorite is to just grab the middle here and go around. You can either reach below like this or you can kind of spin this coil in your hand up here or just kind of around your arm. And you're going to wrap up the rope towards the top of the coil. Okay, now what I like to do is now send a bite of rope through the top of the coil and then put that bite all the way over the top, just like so. So you're essentially doing a girth hitch around the top of the coil and now you can pull this tight and it's locked in there. Another way to finish this is if you're looking to put this on your pack and strap it down is that you can just kind of take and lay this on your knee. I found that easier. And you take a little uh, bite of rope and you lay it along the coil. And then you're just going to wrap around that bite of rope. So you're going to go from the away from the loop to the top of that loop there. And then as you come up around and finish this, you're going to stick the end of your rope through there. Some folks prefer to just put one strand through there and then just tie a little square knot here to keep that together. And now you can put that over your pack, strap it down, good to go. So the last method of tying up this coil is something that I don't find myself using really often, but when I use it, I'm really glad that I know about it. So what you do with this is you're going to start that original way that I said I use the most. And you kind of wind up. Okay, get a couple wraps on there, and then you take that bite, send it through the top of the coil, and you're going to pull the strands through this time. And you're going to put that over your shoulders and kind of split these ropes. So these are your shoulder straps. Now you're going to go around the back, and you're going to trade, and then you're going to tie a square knot here, Okay, and this is now your waist belt. Some people get really into this and, you know, depending how far you're going, you can now do another square knot and now you have your sternum strap. So now you're ready to go. You can just walk away with this. It's a great option if you have a little ways to travel and you have other stuff to carry. I said four methods to coil a rope, but I have a fifth bonus option for you, especially if you're coiling a single strand. Take a look. So this option just uses this bag, and essentially you just tie one end on to one of the loops on the bag, and use a bowl in here, and then you just flake it in or pile it on to this bag. So the whole rope just gets piled right on here, it's very easy to keep it untangled because you're just pulling right off the top when you go to use it. Once it's all piled on here, you're just going to tie the other end to the other loop. And now you just kind of close this thing up by folding the flap. You roll it up, do a zipper. Some of these are a little different, but you cinch the ends. And then clip in here. So you've, now you've got this convenient carry or an over the shoulder. And away we go to the next one. So if you're interested in getting any of this climbing or repelling gear like the rope, the rope bag, uh, or maybe even like some carabiners or belay devices, repel devices, that sort of thing, then feel free to check the links in the description where I'll kind of steer you towards some of the stuff that I recommend starting with. If you're new to Adventures in Reach, welcome. And I post videos Sundays and Thursdays about increasing what adventures are possible for you, the information like this to make them happen, and ways to increase your confidence outdoors. So if you're interested in any of those things, then I hope that you'll consider subscribing below. If you're going to practice this coil and want to back up in case it gets tangled, then check out my how to untangle a rope up here. And if you're interested in more about rappelling and knots, then check out the playlist up here. We'll see you next time.